everyone. Thank you for coming to my talk about open source project in the field of cybersecurity. I hope you are enjoying DEF CON conference so far. In the following minutes, I will talk about few of many our projects that we created or contributed to in Gen Digital. My name is Dominika and I am senior researcher at Gen Digital, previously AVOS before merger with Norton, and I'm also PhD student at this exact faculty. Uh, my research uh, involves working on tools mainly for pattern matching or pattern generation, for malware detection and classification. Uh, I'm also like to share uh, my experience with tools such as Yara and help others uh, to use them basically more effectively. I am very lucky that I work uh, with team uh, that uh, believes in contributing to open source project and sharing our experience from the beginning. The threat intelligence system team at Gen TIS was created around uh, 2011 by PhD students at this faculty uh, and they collaborated on project uh, with company AVG. Lots of things changed during the years. For example, AVG uh, merged with Avos, then with Norton, and uh, we created new company, Gen Digital or Gen uh, in short. Alongside working on open source project, we also are helping students from uh, this faculty to complete their final thesis, master and bachelor's thesis. And since 2011, we helped more, almost 60 students to defend their thesis and uh, work with them in their studies. Also, 22 of them actually joined our, our different team in our company. So we have quite good experience. So we basically are helping students to gain experience and also uh, if the collaboration works greatly, then we uh, offer them full-time position. Also during this, uh, during this collaboration, uh, two dissertation theses actually were already defended and were now working progress, mine included. A little bit more about the final thesis. Uh, we offer mainly uh, very practical topics. Uh, our goal is to uh, show students how open source projects, but also internal projects are managed by big companies and teach them best practices. Um, as I said before, the collaboration uh, is, I would say, beneficial for both parts. Uh, students can test uh, their skills in a very practical environment. We offer them, of course, resources such as hardware, software, our data, which are also in field of cybersecurity quite unique. And of course, our knowledge, our expertise. I will mention one uh, master thesis specifically later on, but uh, just a few examples of topics from previous years. We had work with students on development of system for malware detection or classification, both internal and open source. Uh, we also focusing on reverse engineering, so for example, uh, analyzing and detecting ransomware uh, campaigns and stuff like that. And we also have special projects for threat and campaign anomaly detections. They are actually uh, detecting us new, for example, phishing campaigns, and this uh, information we usually share with public as well. The first project uh, I would like to mention is uh, Red Deck. Red Deck is probably our largest uh, and our most popular project uh, that we created. 
it's a set of tools for the combination of binaries. It was published in 2017. Uh, by the way, you can you can see uh, we are still using Evo's uh, organization at GitHub. It's uh, from like a historic point of view, and we are working on creating one brand gen. But uh, these uh, initiatives are still in progress. So right now we are still writing as Evo's as well. Retic is quite a unique solution uh, because it's uh, providing the compilation that is not dependent on architecture, operating system, or file format. It uh, also offers, alongside the compilation process, other functionalities such as generation or core or control flow graphs, and also it generates uh, functions and code in general in high programming languages such as uh, C++ and Python. As you can see, it's also quite popular about stats on GitHub. Uh, we saw lots of uh, contributions outside of our company. Uh, right now, uh, unfortunately, we have uh, quite lots of different priorities. So for now, Red Deck is in uh, low maintenance mode. But uh, don't be worried, we are still working on the Red Deck. We are still working on new functionalities and maintenance. And uh, we are also open to uh, your attribution. So if you are interested in the compilation or you have uh, some idea about functionality you would like to see in the Red Deck, just contact us and we are open to work it out together. Next open source project that is actually very crucial for us is called Yara. Yara was created in 2008 by Victor Alvarez uh, and he worked in Spanish company Virus Total. Since then, Virus Total was bought by Google uh, as uh, maybe like evidence of importance of this company for cyber security space. And uh, this tool is actually used by many, many companies and institutions all around the world. For us, it's important because we built a whole uh, pipeline and infrastructure around this tool, uh, and we use it every day for malware detection and classification. Yara, uh, it's either it's, uh, A, tool, but also B, language that you can write so-called Yara rules. Yara rules are describing, uh, as you can hopefully see at least partially here, some patterns you want to detect in your samples, uh, some binaries and stuff like that. You can describe uh, statical strings that are actually found in binary, but you also can uh, use your reports from sandboxes, which are running in secure environment, the, the samples, and actually are testing what the sample, usually the malware is actually do, doing during runtime. This is very critical for us. Uh, we are also using platform for, by virus total that uh, is enabling to scan error rules with additional samples that are collected in, uh, by others. We are actually one of the main contributors for Yara. We created many modules that are now available and we are also regularly contributing uh, to bug fixes uh, and additional code and improvements. We also publish additional tools that basically makes your uh, experience of writing Yara rules even better. For example, Yaramod that uh, is mainly used uh, for uh, automatic Yara formatting. It's translating uh, your Yara rules into abstract syntax tree, so you can, for example, format them, uh, add, uh, add some information to the rule, uh, or change the rule based on your specification. 
Also, we have Yari and uh, YLS. Uh, Yari is tool for debugging. Uh, that was uh, quite uh, a long struggle, to be honest, for malware analysts, because Yara itself doesn't provide debugging information. So if you uh, got some warnings, errors, you usually have to <coughs> basically figure it out uh, what's, what's wrong with the rule or the sample. Uh, with Yari, you can actually see exactly what trigger, for example, the error, warning, and stuff like that. YLS is a language server, so you can uh, download it and install, for example, in uh, uh, code editor. And then again, you have additional help uh, for your Yara writing. Arrows writing. Last but not least, Yara NG is quite uh, interesting experiments we uh, conducted. Uh, it's our own uh, in, uh, basically implementation of Yara that is based on Hyperscan, which is the parsing part of, of the project. And uh, we prove basically that Yara can be even faster, even though it's, it's quite fast. Uh, right now and can provide additional benefits for pattern matching. Yara X. Last year, uh, the main actor of Yara, uh, Yara project, Victor, uh, started new generation basically of Yara called Yara X and this version is written in Rust. Currently, uh, it's uh, heavily in the deployment phase but uh, there is already beta version you can actually try out, test out, and also write, for example, some feedback to the main authors. We are helping with the development from the beginning. Actually, one of my uh, students, Tomasz Durish, created uh, useful modules MachO, and also uh, he contributed to a uh, testing environment and uh, he created also a whole new parser for Yara X. He's finishing his master thesis a uh, few weeks back and actually he's defending his work next week. So please wish him luck. He's very talented and I think you will hear about him a lot more in the future. Uh, also, the Yara X is based on a different concept than previously Yara. And uh, the main goal is to create even faster and more user-friendly environment that would be easily used uh, and as individual modules. And you can use it, for example, for also parsing your, your files, current samples. So it would be even more usable outside of the scope of just malware classification or detection. And uh, my project that actually created uh, Genrex, uh, Genrex or Generator of Regular Expressions, uh, is a tool that was created with goal to help malware analysts to uh, simplify basically and automate their work. Uh, even though uh, in practice uh, most of the Yara rules you would see are based on statical information, so. Uh, they actually, uh, the analysts are not running the samples. We have quite a different approach, and we actually prefer to work with uh, behavior samples or reports, which means that we run the sample in sandbox, and uh, then we collect the information and detect the sample, the malware family, for example, based on this information. Yara has special module, Google module, that actually enables this functionality. So you can detect, for example, that the sample is opening some file with specific part or creating some specific new text. Uh, right now, uh, Google module uh, or Google Sandbox is actually uh, out of support. Uh, it was um, changed to Cape v2, uh, but uh, the syntax remains the same and you can still use uh, Google module to match uh, these, these samples. 
the problem is that uh, we have thousands and thousands of reports and even more strings that are generated by these samples. And uh, before Genrex, uh, Marvel analysts had to look uh, through these reports and notice similarities uh, manually because these strings, these mutexes, for example, they usually have some fixed parts because, let's be honest, even malware uh, developers, hackers are still like programmers, so we can get quite lazy, right? So there usually there is some fixed part, and, you, and then there is some uh, part that is mutable based, for example, on a version of your operating system or username or something like that. So it's not easily detectable, but you can still create regular expressions to match them and detect them. Problem is that before Genrex, uh, you had to notice them, uh, these similarities uh, by yourself. Genrex can detect these similarities and uh, mutable parts and can automatically create the regular expressions uh, with additional information, for example, how many samples are covering with these regular expressions and stuff like that. Uh, we publish uh, the, uh, the project on uh, GitHub this year and it was also presented at conferences like IEEE uh, Trustcom last year on or on that com uh, I'm sorry uh, on both com this this year uh, it's still in uh, basically in development because uh, in Gen we are still founding new ways how to use it but uh, for now we are using it mainly for uh, automatic uh, updates of our Yara rules uh, where we found out that uh, it's quite practical to use Genrex automatically uh, just note we are using filtering of clean strings because Genrex itself doesn't provide this functionality and it's quite important to filter those otherwise you get uh, false positive and basically you can uh, detect everything as malware which is not uh, like wanted right if you have uh, some EV solution on your desktop and you want to play some game for example I don't know last of us you don't want to be detected as, as uh, some virus for sharing at uh, Gen, we not only uh, work on open source project, but we also regularly share a result of our work with community. For example, we have uh, blog, uh, blog sites, Decoded and Engineering, Avast.io. Again, Avast in the future will be Gen, I promise. Uh, where we share thread reports, uh, we share the for example, analysis of malware families, uh, decryptors that are also useful if you ever found yourself uh, attacked by some ransomware, you can test our decryptor to see if we provided uh, some decryption options and these tools is uh, free, so you don't have to pay us anything. Uh, we are also sharing some tutorials, for example, on Yara tools. Uh, where we share some tips and tricks how to uh, write even better Yara rules and stuff like that. We also present at conferences such as BotConf. It's, uh, BotConf is, by the way, a very nice conference. It's held uh, in France every year and uh, the people there are just amazing. Car workshops are also interesting, uh, interesting conference. A virus bulletin and stuff like that. We are also helping with lectures at uh, this university, mainly FIT or FEEC. And our goal is basically to educate public, but also professional community uh, at additional uh, blog sites to share even like the basic tips for public, like how to uh, secure your mobile phone, uh, why we need more than just one password for our social media and stuff like that. But we also share uh, the content with professional community, other analysts and stuff like that. Sharing useful tools, as I said before, uh, such as decryptors, 
uh, for ransomware and additional information. And we also like to establish cooperation. For example, we uh, have long uh, lasting collaboration with this faculty, uh, with uh, legal forces, but also with other companies such as Asset and stuff like that. Here I have some examples. For example, uh, I'm working currently on series Novio Rarus, uh, which providing uh, some basic information, but also more advanced tips for mal mainly malware analysts. Here you can uh, see a screenshot from uh, Decoded Avast.io, uh, where we have uh, threat reports from the last quadral, uh, where you can have in one space basically summary of the most important threats uh, and uh, attacks and campaigns. And we also have some reports about uh, scams and uh, malware analysis. Also, we have uh, specialized uh, Twitter, I'm sorry, I don't want to call it X, a Twitter account of us, the Thread Labs that you can follow, where we share additional tips and information about our activities. And in con and conclusion, at Gen, we strongly believe uh, in benefits of open source projects and information sharing. Uh, we have really good experience with collaboration with community uh, on these projects with students and uh, other projects, for example, with faculties. If you have some question uh, on me, you can ask right now or in a minute, or you can write me uh, or contact me uh, also in social on social media like Twitter, LinkedIn, and stuff like that. And last information from my side: if something that I talk about sparked your interest and you would like to know more, maybe even work on similar projects, I have really good news. We are actually uh, currently looking for new colleague to our team. Uh, in position of a software engineer. We are looking for someone from the Czech Republic or Slovakia. Uh, here you can even uh, scan the QR code to see more details. Uh, but basically, uh, you can even discuss with us your, your needs and what are not our needs. Uh, we have hybrid models, so you can choose if you are prefer work from home or you prefer to work from office or at least visit office a few times a week. And uh, even though I, of course, uh, I'm biased a little bit, I would say my team is uh, really a great bunch of people. We like to work together um, and spend time together. So if you are interested, check, check this uh, position out. And that's everything from me. Now you have time to ask me anything. Thank you. Any question? So how do you like DEFCON so far? Good? Everything good? Coffee is good? The, this is the most important thing, like. It's like coffee is good, but everything is good. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Is there any opportunity where you see some uh, other open source uh, projects that are able to produce more or that will be good by every uh, Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm actually, I need a little bit more uh, details, like you're asking if uh, the tools uh, we work on are used selectively on AVs or on different scenarios. Like the, I, I didn't probably hear the beginning of the questions correctly. Okay. Uh,
I'm honestly not aware that uh, these uh, libraries are available defaultly on Fedora, but you can always install them. For example, uh, if it's Python library, it's uh, available via pip, basically. Uh, but there are distributions uh, that are specifically focused on reverse engineering, where you, I would guess, at least have Yara, because it's quite standard. For example, as, as Suricata or Snort. Um, so, yeah, yeah, they are publicly available and you can install them always, at le least from GitHub. Thank you. Any other question? Okay. okay. Thank you.